gentlemen, Colgate Dental Cream presents the Dennis Day Show, written by Frank Galen. With Paula Winslow, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, yours truly, Vern Smith, our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Twice a day and before every date, use your breath while you clean your teeth. Here's Dennis to sing McNamara's Band. Oh, me name is McNamara, I'm of the band. Although we're few in numbers, we're the finest in the land. We play at wakes and weddings and at every fancy ball. And when we play to funerals, we play the march from Saul. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns, they play the way. McCarty pumps the old bassoon while I the pipes to play. And Hennessy, Tennessee toodles the flute and the music something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. <laughs> Oh, what a parade we're having here! The grandest parade I've ever seen in all my life! You get to see the lights here! Right now we are rehearsing for a very swell affair. The annual celebration, all the gentry will be there. When Eisenhower to Ireland came, he took me by the hand. Says he, I never saw the likes of... Harris Band. Oh, what a band you have there. The greatest thing I've ever seen in all my life. Oh, my name is Uncle Julius, and from Sweden I have come to play with McNamara's band and big debate by drum. And when I march along the street, the ladies think I'm grand. They shout, there's Uncle Julius playing with an Irish band. The drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. McCarthy pumps the old bassoon while I the pipes do play. And Hennessy, Tennessee tootles the flute and the music something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. It's the grandest and the finest and the most wonderful band that I've ever seen. If you don't agree, just, uh, just to be sociable, I'll fight the best man in the house. <coughs> and I'm not long for this world. <laughs> Credit to old Ireland is McNamara's back. Colby <laughs> Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning your teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For cold cream has a safe polishing and thoroughly brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And use Colgate Dental Cream twice a day and before every date. Your breath while you clean your teeth. Well, it's late afternoon as we look in at the Anderson Boarding House in Weaverville, where our young hero, Dennis Day, rooms. An afternoon you might think like any other. But if you did, you'd be wrong. For as far as our hero is concerned, it's just about the greatest afternoon of his life. He's just burst open the front door of the Anderson house in a state of wild excitement to come face to face with his astonished girlfriend, Mildred Anderson. Mildred, the evening paper. Is it here? My picture's in it, Mildred. My picture. Your picture? Yeah, for the Weaverville safety campaign to cut down street accidents. You see, some people cross the streets outside of the safety zone, some lights, some cross diagonally from corner to corner. But why did they take your picture? I was the first person to do everything wrong at the same time. <laughs> oh, so that's it. Sure, I'm famous. I've been chosen the pedestrian most likely to decease. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Well, yes, I guess so. 
How long has this safety campaign been going on? Oh, it started this morning. The mayor began it himself with speeches at the corner of 3rd and Elm and from the hospital. Gee, two speeches in one morning? Well, it was really one speech continued. While he was speaking at the corner of 3rd and Elm, a car hit him. (laughs) Well, the paper's right here. Let's see now. Look, right there, on page one. Read that caption. Um... Do you wish to visit a cemetery permanently? All you have to do is walk across the street in the criminally careless manner of Dennis Day, 22, whose photo appears above. That's me. (laughs) At first, Mr. Day was believed drunk or crazy, but it was later learned he walks this way all the time. I'm going to send clippings to all my friends. They've certainly given you quite a... Why, Dennis! Huh? The picture. It isn't your picture at all. Oh, Mildred, you must be mistaken. I'm not. Look. Your hair's black. This man's a blonde. You're clean-shaven. He has a mustache. You have a small nose, and he has a great big one. And you're wearing a blue suit. He has on a gray one with a dewy button in the lapel. Don't you see? Gee, you're right. It can't be me. I'm a Democrat. <laughs> Of course it isn't you. They ran a picture of another man over your story. Oh, that's a fine thing. I nearly get myself killed and they give someone else for it. (laughs) Yes, I know how you feel. Gee whiz. Well, I'm going over to Aunt Marjorie's house for dinner. I guess I won't see you till tomorrow. Well, okay, Mildred. Darn it anyway. And I was going to use that picture to start a couple of scrapbooks for our children. Oh, gee... Do you really think we'll have some someday, Dennis? Why not? I saw some swell ones for sale at Woolworths the other day. (laughs) Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Mildred. Dinner will be ready as soon as Dennis comes down, Herbert. Uh, Very well, (laughs) Poopsie. time you had a little talk with your daughter about the... No, I doubt if it'll do much good. I probably won't get any further with her than I do with you, dream thing. <laughs> well, see that you try. Hand me that evening paper over there on the table, her... Yes, lover girl. <laughs> May I look at my part of it? Here. Thank you. Class 5 ad section is bigger than usual tonight. <laughs> Great Scott. Well, what's the matter? Why, right here on page 18, among the ads, there's a picture of Dennis Day. Dennis Day? What's his picture doing in the paper? Well, listen to what it says, Hunter. Still missing after four years' search, Skylar Van Rensselaer, heir to the great Van Rensselaer sardine fortune, pictured above, is believed amnesia victim. You mean... Oh, Herbert, it can't be Dennis Day. It's amnesia. So that's it. I knew no one could act like Dennis does and be normal. (laughs) Oh, that poor, unfortunate, dear, sweet boy. Gosh, Dennis Day isn't Dennis Day the soda jerk at all. He's Skylar Van Rensselaer who was in the fish business. I knew there was something about that boy. Really? Well, I've stood very close to him and I never noticed it. (laughs) Read the rest of it, Herbert. Well, it, it, it just says, Young Van Rensselaer was born November 17th, 1926. His brother and sister are offering $10,000 reward to anyone successfully aiding him in the recovery of his memory. Ten thousand... Herbert, we've got to bring back that boy's memory. My maternal instincts have been aroused. Yes, I know how you feel. Well, uh, oh, say, I hear him coming downstairs now. Now, I'll handle this, Herbert. You aren't to say one word until I tell you. Do you understand? Very well. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, dinner ready yet? Uh, Dennis, I, uh, I want to talk to you. To me, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Do you know who you are, my boy? Why, yes, ma'am, I think so. Who? Well, offhand, I'd say I was me. <laughs> no. I'm not? Definitely not. We have proof. Gee, I was so certain to... Now, Dennis, try to think. Do you remember your father? Oh, sure. He was a relative of mine. (laughs) Did he ever discuss 
discussed with you what you'd be doing in your later life. Well, let's see. I do remember my father hoped I'd grow up. Yes? That's all. <laughs> we'll try a new tack. What do you know about your birth? Well, I'm pretty sure it happened. <laughs> I don't mean that. Do you remember where you were born? Well, Mother told me it was in a small town out west. Wrong. You were born in a big eastern city. Oh. Well, anyway, it was in 1925. Wrong again. It was 1926. In June? November. Gee, Mother didn't know much about me, did she? <laughs> Herbert, you may take over. Uh, yes, Poopsy. Now, Dennis, <clears throat> I want you to concentrate. Yes, sir. On what? Sardines. Yes, sir. Are you concentrating on sardines? Yes, sir. Good. Now tell me, who is your father? A sardine? Poopsie, <laughs> you may have it back again. I give up. No. Wait a minute. Of course. You know how loss of memory is always cured in the movies. Blow on the head. Yeah. Hand me the fire tongs, Herbert. Poopsie, no, you can't. We're not sure he is Skyler Van Rensselaer. So if he's Dennis Day, have I lost anything? No, Poopsie, but there must be another way. If the boy has two selves, we'll bring the other one out. Uh, and meanwhile, let's go into dinner, huh? Yeah, that's a good idea, Mrs. Anderson. Both of me is very hungry. Now, before we continue a day in the life of Skylar Van Rensselaer, here's our young hero, Dennis Day, to sing I'll Never Love Again. I'll never love again If you forget me My heart won't let me Love someone new I'll never dream again How could I go on dreaming If each dream that we made would have suddenly fade in the blue. I'll never thrill again to someone's kiss. For what good would it do? It's you I'll miss. My heart is yours alone. Be careful, don't break it, for if you ever should, darling, I never could love again. Well, because of a transposed newspaper photograph, the Andersons are convinced that Dennis Day is really Skylar Van Rensselaer suffering from amnesia. It's the following morning now, and Dennis has left for his job at Willoughby's drugstore. Meanwhile, Mrs. Anderson is enlisting Mr. Willoughby's aide over the phone in restoring Dennis's memory. But Mrs. Anderson, it's incredible. You're positive it was his picture? Hmm. Well, we've got to restore that poor boy's memory. Not only for the $10,000 reward, but for other reasons which don't interest me. <laughs> eh? Well, uh, shock sometimes snaps them out of it. I may try that. Yes, you see, shock... Oh, I'll have to hang up, Mrs. Anderson. Here he comes. Good morning, Mr. Will. Ooh. I beg your pardon, sir? Quick, what's your name? Mr. Willoughby, do you feel all right? Of course I do. What's your name? Gee, if you... But don't go near Mrs. Anderson. She'll let you have it with the fire tongs. <laughs> Dennis, you need help. You've got to recover your true identity of Skylar Van Rensselaer. Yeah, that's what Mrs. Anderson says, too. Well, there's only one way to get that help, my boy. Go to a psychiatrist. You think a foot doctor can help me? <laughs> a psychiatrist is a doctor of the mind, Dennis. And there's a very good one right here in Weaver. Much more abnormal than your son. One patient of his bit his nails. Ducks. Well, a person can bite his nails and still be normal, can he? Not when he does it right through his shoes. <laughs> I know Dr. Allsberg can straighten you out, my boy. Will you go to see him? But, Mr. Willoughby, I'm perp perfectly normal. Honest, I am. 
Dennis, you want to be heir to a fortune, don't you? Gee, you mean a psychiatrist can do that for me? He certainly can. Boy, that's different. I should have gone to one of those fellows before I ever started working. Splendid. I'll phone him that you're on the way. Come in, my boy. Come right in. Thank you, Doctor. Now then, you're the young man who thinks he's Dennis Day. That's your trouble, is it? Yes, sir, and I've got it bad. <laughs> well, we'll soon have you all straightened out. Suppose we get a little of your background, what you remember of it. Yes, sir. Let's go right back to your babyhood. What kind of a baby were you? A boy. <laughs> yes, I know. But was there anything unusual or odd about your babyhood? Well, half the time I couldn't see. Ah, I couldn't see? That's right. It was on account of my mother being so nearsighted. Oh, heredity, eh? Oh, no, sir. It was just that half the time she put the rubber pants on the wrong end of me. <laughs> I see. Perhaps we should take uh, a somewhat later age. Say about the time you first became... Pardon? Well, you realize there is an age at which young men become acutely aware of girls, don't you? Oh, yes, sir, and I can hardly wait. <laughs> hmm. Obviously, schizophrenic. Again, I would like to beg it. <laughs> schizophrenic, split personality. Oh. You have submerged your true character, hard-drinking, woman-chasing Van Rensselaer, Beneath the assumed character of Dennis Day, who is just the opposite. Do I make myself clear? Oh, yes, sir. It's just that I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> In other words, your amnesia is caused by an inner revulsion to your true self. I can confirm my findings with a very simple test. Have you ever heard of word associations? No, sir. I don't join many clubs. <laughs> I'm referring to a psychopathological test. Or to try and put it more understandably, neuros... You missed. <laughs> In any event, I will give you a word. You want to tell me the word you associate with it. Ready? Yes, sir. Black. Black. <laughs> Black? I thought you'd say white. We just... <laughs> It isn't an argument, it's a test. If I said boy, you'd say girl. All right. Chair. Thanks, but I've already got one. <laughs> Chair is the word. You're supposed to say her with you. I'm sorry, sir. I'll try it again. Son. Okay, try it again. <laughs> I am trying it again. Please listen. Son. I'm listening, Pop. <laughs> Son is the word I gave you. You're supposed to tell me the word it makes you think of. Oh, moon. <laughs> At last. You finally understand what I mean. <laughs> Are you ready now? Yes, sir. Good. Bad. That isn't the word! <laughs> Sorry. I'll give you the word now. Table. Martin O'Malley. <laughs> what has Martin O'Malley got to do with table? Well, he's a friend of mine from Hooperstown where I used to live. He was always under it. <laughs> well, so much for word association. Yes, sir. In fact, for tests of all kinds. <laughs> Young man, there is only one practical treatment for your condition. Hypnosis. Hypnosis? If you'll permit me to put you into an induced hypnotic trance, as distinguished from the one you're in now. <laughs> I believe I can reactivate your subconscious and restore your identity. You mean you're going to hypnotize me? Exactly. If you will permit it. Well, there is a fortune waiting for me, I hear. Go ahead. Very well. Now look deep into my eyes. That's it. You're getting drowsy. Your senses are becoming numb. You're falling asleep. 
asleep. Sleep. Sleep. Hey, f- up! <laughs> Pardon me. Sometimes it goes into reverse. <laughs> ah. Look into my eyes again. Deep into my eyes. You're getting drowsy. Languorous. That's it. You're falling asleep. Sleep. Sleep. You're now in a hypnotic state. Listen to me. You are not Dennis Day. I am not Dennis Day. Your name is Skylar Van Rensselaer. My name is Skylar Van Rensselaer. You are rich. I'm loaded. (laughs) You're a playboy, mad about women. I'm a playboy, mad about women. You like to take a drink now and then. When you awaken, you will go home, but remember nothing of Dennis Day. You will be Skylar Van Rensselaer, the playboy. And now, awaken! Five o'clock and still no sign of him, Poopsie. Are you sure the boy's all right? Of course he's all right, Herbert. Mr. Willoughby told me on the phone he'd send him to Dr. Allsberg, the psychiatrist. And you really think back here thinking he's Skylar Van Rensselaer? I do. Well, if I know Dennis, there's a much better chance that Dr. Allsberg will go back to Vienna thinking he's Sigmund Freud. <laughs> You're always... Oh, that may be he. I'll go. Dennis! The name is Skylar, Shorty. Who are you? Why, why, don't you know me? I'm Herbert Anderson. Glad to meet you, Herbie. Is that all there is of you, or are you standing in a manhole? <laughs> My goodness gracious. Oh, there you are, Dennis. You're back. Who's this character, Shorty? Your mother? <laughs> oh. Whoa, how dare you. Skip it, babe. Babe? Why, you never called me anything but Mrs. Anderson in your life. Well, don't crowd your luck. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Well, how about a little snort, huh? Just a single scotch with a gin chaser for me. I'm on the wagon. <laughs> Mr. Van Rensselaer. Mother, have you heard of... Oh, there you are. Hiya, baby. Let's neck. Oh, <laughs> Dennis. My name isn't Dennis, toots. Just call me Castor Oil. Castor Oil? Why? Because I'm bad medicine, toots. Yahoo! <laughs> Get your coat on, kid. We'll go for a drive in the park. But I don't want a drive in the park. You not only get a drive in the park with me, babe, you get a park in the drive. <laughs> Mother. Mother, what's come over Dennis? Why, he, he's become a terrible ladies' man. Yes, sir. All I need now is a terrible ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, Frizzle Top. You busy? Frizzle Top. Why, you got... You got! I've got ten million. Uh, uh, yes, you, you, haven't you? Oh, forget it. This is the babe I'm interested in. What do you say, doll face? Oh, how could you be so awful? You ought to be ashamed. Now, don't race your motor, toots. I'm feeling give inny if you're feeling give outy. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, what? Where? Where am I? Uh oh! I think the enchanted hour is over. <laughs> Why, you're home, Dennis? What on earth happened to you? Gosh! The last I remember, I was in Doctor Altberg. He hypnotized me. Hypnotized you? Then you're not Skylar Van Rensselaer. Oh, please don't start that again. I'm Dennis Day. Honest, I am. Mildred, did I? Did I act funny? I should say you did. And the things you had nerve enough to say to my mother. Oh, golly. I'm going down to the doctor's office right now and tell him off plenty. And I'm going with you, Dennis. Are you going to tell him off too, Mr. Anderson? No, sir. I'm going down for a treatment. (laughs) 
Christmas Day. We'll be back in just a song. But first, here's a fact. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And just how important that is, our Colgate players are here to demonstrate for you. As our curtain goes up, we find a policeman looking over a young boy who is sitting on a porch. Did you see that, Officer Cassidy? Did you see Mary slam that door? Jeepers, a fine thing when my girl puts out both the cat and me. Danny, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would have this. Might I be in the chat? That's what I don't know, Officer Cassidy. The girl won't talk. Why, I bet even the third degree wouldn't get a reason out of Mary. Well, now, I wonder if you're in the clear on a certain charge I'm thinking of, Danny. You know it could do you no harm to appear before your dentist, me boy. And here's what Danny found out. Scientific tests have proved that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, Colgate Dental Cream's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth, cleans them thoroughly, and... Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. In fact, nationwide tests of leading toothpaste prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Here's Dennis Day and Charles Dance's beautiful arrangement of September Song. Benny every Sunday, and be sure and be with us again next week for another Dennis Day program. More songs, more songs in the life of our star, Dennis Day. Meanwhile, be sure to use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. It's new, it's amazingly different. Not a liquid, not a soap, but an utterly new cream shampoo that leaves hair soft, radiant, glamorous, and also easy to manage. It's Luster Cream Shampoo, created by Kay Dumit, who combined rich lanolin with secret ingredients. Use Luster Cream Shampoo and see how soft, how naturally lovely, how brilliantly alive and well-behaved your hair can be. Ask for Luster Cream Shampoo at cosmetic counters. This is Vern Smith reminding you to stay tuned for the Mr. District Attorney program, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.